Hi folks, over here. Um, just a quick note in regards to a topic that just came up recently, and that is uh, figuring out the performance for a takeoff or a landing and taking into account all the notes uh, that you have on the bottom of this table. Um, in this particular case, what happened, uh, a, uh, the flight examiner had given the student a wind direction and a velocity and uh, this needed to be uh, adjusted first, of course, well, calculated in the uh, headwind crosswind component uh, graph here, uh, which you no doubt had on your written test as well. But uh, uh, let's just go through some very rough numbers. You see the 20 knot velocity arc right here. And let's say, for example, 20 knot velocity, total velocity, uh, velocity, but you have a 30, it's 30 degrees off the runway. Let's say your runway is 160. Uh, it's about 160 magnetic, be runway 16. The wind should be maybe from 130 and, um, and, and, and blows at, um, at 20 knots uh, total velocity. Well, that really isn't 20 knots of headwind, it's just, just a little less than that. And it's only really only about 10%, sorry, uh, half of crosswind component. We have about 10 knots or half crosswind component. Um, if you turn that around and say, well, what about 60 degrees? So let's say we're runway 16, aligned roughly, 160 magnetic. The wind is from 100, it's about a 60 degree angular difference. Still at 20 knot total velocity, only half of it uh, is now acting as a headwind. and uh, But almost all of it, or a lot of it, um, uh, acts as a crosswind. So we kind of if you want to remember that as the 30-60 rule, it's pretty easy to remember. Uh, at, at, 30, at 30 degrees, basically, um, you, know, uh, you have almost all of it as a headwind, only half as a crosswind. And then at 60 degrees, um, it kind of turns the other way around. Well, where is that needed? Well, it's needed when the examiner, uh, in this case, uh, gives you uh, a runway and, and, and a wind and, and has you determine a performance. And then... Um, if you move down below the table to 0.3, decrease distance 10% for each 9 knots headwind. So um, if you are given runway 1.6, uh, let's say with an 18 knot wind from 1.30 or so, um, well, what you can't do is say, well, 18 knots is 2 times 9. Well, that's a 20% adjustment that I have to make. Uh, well, that would be wrong uh, because... That, that, that's not how that works. You need, need to first look that up in the table. And that error, of course, becomes quite large as, as the wind it has more angular difference between the runway. So let's say a wind from 100 for uh, a, a runway 16 uh, be a 60 degree angular difference. And uh, almost all of it acts as a crosswind, only half of it uh, basically acts as a headwind. So you'd be way off there with your calculations. So, so you really need to watch out for that. Maybe um, highlight this or, or make a note here. It, it doesn't say headwind component here, uh, but, it's really that, but that is what they mean for you to do. And um, so don't get caught with this. Uh, maybe make a note for, uh, in your practical test so you can uh, remember to go ahead and uh, uh, make those adjustments. Okay, that's about all. That's all I got for today. Um, really appreciate it, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.